Listen. If you're not white as a person, if you're not classified as white, then you are something less than white. By less meaning you're supposed to have less power, less choices than a person who is classified as white in all nine areas of activity, wherever you are on the planet. It doesn't make any difference what shade of black you might be. Black, brown, red, yellow, beige, uh, uh, slang term, red bone, whatever. If the question is, are you white or not? That's it. You don't even have to go into the shades of color. Shades of color, just shades of color. White is non-color. That's why they call people of color colored people, people that have color. If you're white, white is not a color except when you're talking about paint. If you're talking about people, you're talking about a category of people who are supposed to be eligible to be white supremacists. That doesn't say, you know, a lot of white uh, black people are white. If you look at their skin color, they're really white. We've got some of them in our families, extended families, if not in the immediate family, so-called, all right? Even though in white, in the system of white supremacy, there's no such thing as a black family anyway. I mean, that's a myth. That's something made up. That's something black people walk around thinking they got. Prisoners of war don't have families, all right? That's not logical. That's not true. You cannot be a prisoner of war and have anything. You don't even have yourself, not to say anything about having a family. And the white supremacists prove that over and over again, all the time, right in our face. You don't have nothing. You have, you don't even have yourself. Mm -hmm. You just got me as your boss. That's all you got. And it'll stay that way. And that's what drives you black people crazy. Mm -hmm. Because you don't understand how we do that and what your status really is. That's why you're crazy like we have made you, and you act crazy, and you will be in this state as long as I have power over you. We mm -hmm. have to understand that. Prisoners of war, I keep saying that over and over again. Prisoners, what does a prisoner of war have? That's the question. A prisoner of war has nothing, even when they think they have something. Once you're a prisoner of war, you're just a number. Yes. And once you're a prisoner of war in the system of white supremacy, you're just a color. That's all that you have. And you don't even have that because the white supremacists would walk up to you and say what color you are, you know, on any given day. All right? Or what color anything is. If the white supremacists say, you look up a black person, you say, oh, the sky is blue. And the white supremacists said, no. The sky is gray. And the black person will say, well, I'm looking at it, and, and I can see, a, I know a blue sky. I ain't afraid. Mm -hmm. And the white supremacist will say, what do I say, boy? I say, the sky is gray. Now, are you going to prove to me that the sky is blue? What are you going to use as proof? Well, I, I got sense. I can see it. I can see that the sky is blue. I know blue when I see it. The sky is blue today. It ain't gray. And the white supremacist said, what did I just say to you? They say, well, are you going to make me say that the sky is blue? Now, that's the white supremacist talking to a black person mm -hmm. anywhere on this planet mm -hmm. right now. Are you going to make me say that when I just told you, boy, that the sky is gray? Yeah, but, yeah, but, nothing. Yeah, but, you don't overrule me under any circumstance. I don't care what you're looking at. You say you got a wife. I say you haven't. Your wife belongs to me. Now, prove that she doesn't. Because I can prove that she does because I own you. And that means what? And this is very important when the white supremacists are talking. If I own you, what do you own? Just answer that question. Mm -hmm. Stop and think about it. If somebody owns me, then what do I own? 
I don't own anything because whoever owns me owns everything that I claim is mine. And that gets back to that answer about somebody saying something about a basketball player. Uh huh. Uh, you know, having this and having that. Under the system of white supremacy, if you're black, you have absolutely nothing. Not even a, a, the privilege of calling yourself black if a white supremacist say you're brown, like somebody just called in and said, or you're yellow, or you're blue. Why? Because I said so, boy. Because wow. I said so, gal. Now, you prove to me that I'm lying. And I just told you, you bet not tell me that I lied. Because mm-hmm. I can hurt you, and you cannot hurt me. That's the bottom line, folks. Yes, sir. That's the bottom line. I can hurt you a whole lot more than you can hurt me. And every non-white person on this planet that ever attempted to do that, we laugh at them, and we say, bring it on, because now that's the bottom line. Can you prove it by force? Because mm-hmm. that's what you're going to take to do it, to, to change what I just told you, sky being gray instead of blue. Well, uh, one thing, when you set up a system where you decide what having it all means, okay, uh, the, the white supremacists set the value systems up for people all over the world. You know, uh, you you wear a suit and a tie, you're a businessman, all right? And, you know, and, and you can do business because they say this is the business suit. So even people who don't particularly care for the system of white supremacy, who are people of color, they say, well, hey, if you're going to do business, if you're going to be taken seriously, and the only way you can be taken seriously is that you wear a suit, whatever that means. What is a suit? And a tie. And what is a tie for? It's something you put, a piece of cloth that you put around your neck that kind of hangs down from your neck. And, and what, what is that all about? Well, you got to have it if you're going to be taken seriously. Okay, according to whom? According to the white supremacists. I'm not sitting down and talking to you and you come in there. I mean, with your pants down and your shoes unlaced and, and your hair all over going in different directions and whatnot, and you're talking about you're a creature to be taken seriously, you are something to be shot because you look like an animal. Why? Because I say you look like an animal. That's why. All right? So it's the same way with what the value of a female is who wears dark skin. All right, what is that worth? That's not worth nothing to anybody. I mean, except to make some more animals to be used and mistreated. That's all that's good for. I mean, if what she thinks or what her ambitions are or how she thinks she's supposed to look and all like that, who cares? Who is supposed to care? This is a throwaway creature. All it's good for is reproducing some more things for us as white supremacists to use for whatever we want to use for in the form of mistreatment. And when we get tired, in answer to the basic question, of just being in charge, just being supreme, we get bored. So we just check out. We kill ourselves. Because we ain't got nothing else to do no way. I mean, you know... We, we know more than anybody. We can go any place at any time. Nobody stops us from doing anything. And so after we've eaten all the food and traveled here and traveled there, and we've sold people, we've told people that you come in and buy this little bag and you'll be somebody. Why? Why if I buy this bag, I'll be somebody? Because I said so with your dumb self. You do what I say. What I say is a valuable is valuable. And I got a little bag here with my name on it, and that's valuable. And you should work for 50 years to try to get one of these bags. And then you can take it down and show it to your other dumb black people, all right? And they'll kill you for it. And that's a part of my business, too. And I'll put, put my name on the side of some shoes that I make. 
and I'll get you killed for that. Because that's what I train you all to do, to worship whatever I give you and tell you that it's worth something, and you'll kill each other for it. And that's a part of my plan. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, I get tired of the whole thing. I mean, I do so much of it, I get sick of myself. So I just check out. So what? I mean, you know, because, hey, <laughs> you know, because I can. I'm a master. So if I decide that I don't want to breathe no more, I just stop breathing. So mm -hmm. what? You know, because I like death anyway. I mm -hmm. like the dead things. Mostly dead things in the form of black bodies. I like to see them dead. 